Hi there, today we are gonna go over uh, for the retail customer on what to do if I'm camping, my slide out is stuck in the out position and some of the override options on the 5.5 exact slide system. If you're a retail customer and you find yourself in a situation where your slide out is stuck in the out position, not coming back in so you can leave the campsite, we have a couple of override and bypass options on the 5.5 exact slide. The first one is going to be your flex override shaft with a number three bit in the end of it. Uh, we ask that you guys use a drill, not an impact for this particular procedure. And we're gonna show you that and how that operates right now. Okay, first you're gonna grab your drill, not an impact. We're gonna go ahead and insert your fle override flex shaft. Once that's inserted in there, what you're looking for is at the top of the jams, there's gonna be your motors on each side of the rough opening or each side of your slide out box. There'll be a motor in, inside the jam here. In that motor, at the very top of it, it has your override area. That's where your number three bit is gonna go in. It's gonna be a little bit difficult to locate. You'll have to gain access. There may be a wall in the way. Put your hand over to the top of the jam clamp on the outside. Feel for that spot, insert your number three bit into the top of it. And from this point, you can go ahead and run your drill. Uh, this will not come in like it does off of your, your switch and off your power of your coach. It's gonna take a little bit, but this will get you in in an emergency situation so you can get to the dealer and have it worked on. So now we're gonna go ahead and run that and you'll see here at the standoff bracket where it starts to operate and run that room to the end position. You'll continue doing that two or three inches at a time, you're going to have to go back and forth from one side of the box to the other because the motors on the G55 exact slide are independent from one another. The motor controller is the only thing keeping them running together and in, in time. Now we're on the other side of the room. We notice our standoff bracket is touching the mech here. We're gonna find that override spot in the top of the motor, insert our number three bit, We're going to continue going from side to side, left and right side of the slide out box until we have that room walked in completely so you guys can get that to the dealership and find out why you're, you don't have any power uh, coming from your switch anymore and that's not operating the slide out like it's supposed to. All right, another option for an override or a bypass of the system is at your motor controller. Uh, first things first is you're going to have to locate that motor controller and unfortunately we don't always know where the OEM is putting that. Um, if you are able to locate your motor controller for your slide room and there may be more than one depending on if you have multiple 5.5 uh, five exact slides uh, installed on your coach. Find the one that's for the slide out that you're having a problem with. Once you do you're gonna notice that there is a red button on each side of the control board. With those buttons, it is possible to go ahead and bypass, as long as you have power going to the coach, you can bypass the switch altogether. If it's say a faulty switch that, or a wiring issue from the switch to the motor controller that's causing you not to pull the room in when you're getting ready to leave the campsite, the left side will operate the left side of the room that's standing inside the coach looking out. The one on the right side will operate the right side motor. If you can find this, go ahead and push your left side button or right side button. It doesn't matter which one you operate first. 
and that will begin to operate and run the left side of the room in as long as the OEM wired up the motor controller properly. You can continue doing this, alternating the buttons until the room is completely sealed in the in position. From that point, you guys can go ahead and get to a dealer and find out exactly what the power supply problem is, um, whether it's a switch or a power, power issue, whatever the case may be, uh, that was stopping your room from retracting. Uh, another option is going to the leads on the motors themselves with a jump pack or a battery pack off your, your drill or your impact. Now locate the leads. Nine times out of 10, these will be connected with these little Wagos, which is very convenient. Go ahead and flip them open, pull your power wire out. Now that you have access to your leads to your motor, you can go ahead and take your jumper pack or your battery. Now you may have to switch these around. You're gonna to have to test it. And that'll run your slide out in as well. Now you're gonna to have to alternate corners of the slide out box, go to the right side, do the same thing, come back to the left, alternating back and forth until you've walked this room into the inn uh, fully retracted, sealed position. Now you can go ahead and get it to the dealer and find out what's going on from there. So this is another option uh, over the override or the bypass at the mo motor controller. In a situation where one side of the room is functioning properly and the other isn't, whether that be the room is running uh, or lagging behind um, more than two inches, uh, not sealing. Um, it's out of time more than two inches. If you locate your motor controller, there's two red buttons on either side of the control panel where all your wires are connected. If you simultaneously hold those down together at the same time, you're going to see a red light start to flash. Once you've held those down and the red light starts to flash, let up. Just like that. It's a master hard set for the motor controller. It may not be anything wrong at, at that moment. It could be the controller just kind of got out of sorts and um, it doesn't need to be replaced at this point. We just did a master hard reset. Now from this point, we try to operate our slide out and see if it functions in the manner that it's supposed to. Staying within two inches of time and sealing in the in and out position. This also may work for a particular situation where your motor on one side isn't functioning and the right side is, or vice versa, left side's running, right side isn't. Try a master hard reset before you go into any of the other options. In this particular uh, situation here, this will be where one side of the room isn't functioning, but the other side is. Uh, for this particular setup, it'll be the left side of the room doesn't wanna come in, but the right side does. It's operating just like it should. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is come up to your motor leads coming out of the top of the jam Disconnect from your Wagos. Make sure that you have plenty of the, the coax around or the coating around the wire stripped far enough back to where we are making a good connection inside those Wagos. So double check your connections first and then go ahead and try to operate that slide again. See if that takes care of your issue. If the problem still persists, this will be a situation where you've located your motor controller We'll move on to that point and we'll show you a couple of options there. Now that you've located your motor controller, a couple of options you have here. You have your M1 positive negative. That's going to be the right side of the room standing inside looking out. You have your M2 positive and negative wires. 
coming from that motor over there, what you can do is start to operate your room and run it in a little bit on this right side because we know that's functioning properly. The left side at this point would still continue to stay in the sealed position because we know that there's a problem uh, with that particular motor or the controller for the, for the motors. If it's in the controller itself, this wouldn't be a bad motor situation. We could remove our positive and negative from the M1 side because we know that's functioning properly. Remove our M1 or M2 positive and negative and put them in the same position that we just pulled the wires out or off the spades on the motor controller for the left side, leave these disconnected. And that's going to operate the left side of the room only for you. This would be in a situation where the motor controller, for whatever reason, has occurred some sort of damage uh, internally and the motor controller itself needed to be replaced. One side works, one side doesn't. Once you have the room, all the way in the end position, you can go ahead and get to a dealer and have that uh, situation taken care of, whether that's a replacement of the motor controller at that time, or if it ends up being a wiring issue, whatever the case may be. Uh, the next option or scenario you have is if one side of the motor uh, room isn't functioning at all, uh, the motor will not move, but the right side will, or vice versa, the left side does and the right side doesn't. A uh, quick way to go ahead and diagnose that, whether it's the motor that's bad or if it's in the wiring or the controller itself that needs to be replaced, locate your motor controller. Once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch the M2 positive negative with the M1 positive negative. Say this in this situation, the left side doesn't work, but the right side does. Remove my wires from the M2, remove my wires from the M1, connect my M1 wires to my M2 spades. Connect my M2 wires to my M1 spades. Now go ahead and try to operate your slide out box from that point. When you hit your button, if that motor on that left side still does not work, that indicates that it's a bad motor. If the problem switches to the other side, now your right side doesn't run, that's given us a clear indicator that the motor controller itself is damaged at that point and may need to be replaced. This also could be in the wiring um, somewhere between the, the motor leads and the controller as well. In a worst case situation, you've lost power to your coach completely. Nothing's working in the unit at the time. What we've done is we've located the motor controller. You got your 12 volt supply power coming in from your converter, and then you have your ground wire. We go ahead and we pull both of those connections off Get those out of the way, take some wires, run you some of your some spades on there to fit on your controller on each end of the wire. I'm going to go ahead at this point, I'm going to hook my white so I can distinguish the difference. Make sure it's two different color coded wires. My white for my power and my black to my ground. At the other end, and simply here for emergency situation, I know this is a Makita 18 volt battery. It's a 12 volt system for an emergency situation. This is gonna get you power to the motor controller. So you can go ahead and operate your switch, get your slide outs in, and allow you to go ahead and get to a dealer and find out why you lost power to your coach. White wire was my positive, And on my battery, I do have a positive and negative side. So I'm gonna put my white to my positive, my black to my negative, and you should 
see a green wire at that, a green light, sorry, at that point at your motor controller, letting you know you do have power to the motor controller. At this point, you can have somebody operate the switch for the slide out. Run your slide out all the way in to the fully retracted position. Now you're good to go to pack up, leave, get to a dealer and have the situation taken care of, uh, whether uh, what the reason was for the loss of power to the coach.